another year, another time to talk about Tadej Pogacar because he has absolutely blown up the Tour de France today. If you haven't seen the results, then I guess I don't know why you're watching this video, but go watch it because it is absolutely bonkers. Well, only you need to watch him like 33k out. Oh, he attacks about there. But anyway, we've got the stage results up here. Tadej Pogacar finishing fourth, 49 seconds. And then his nearest competitors on the GC finished, what, three minutes 30 back. It was absolutely bonkers. So we look at the stage here, Cold Al Rom, basically UAE absolutely launched it up there. Pogacar attacked, descended, attacked, and gained more time, descend to the finish. So obviously Tadej Pogacar hasn't uploaded his file yet. He's going to take a bit of time, and I thought I can't be bothered to wait for it. Uh, and also my normal climbing people have decided not to up post because apparently it could be crazy numbers. But based on what I can remember from the stage and obviously other people's Stravas, we can go have a look and figure out some numbers. So first lad we're going to have a look at is Alexei Lukshenko. Now he finished in the major GC group um, with all the with everyone else, so he was basically 3 minutes 30 back. Now if we think about the climb, um, so this is the stage here, Col de la Rome here was basically where Pagacha put about a minute and 20, a minute and a half on everyone else, and on the next climb he also put about a minute and a half into each other so we'll, we'll just go through the stage it was a pretty hard stage like from the off it was ridden at six watts per kilo for 12 minutes and that was enough to drop Garrett Thomas and if we actually look at the steep section it was more like 6.2 the rest of these climbs not too bad you know ridden at 5.3 ish um, it seems like which is obviously like hard if you're just a normal human but if you're a Tour de France rider going for the GC that's pretty calm like that's pretty much zone two um, well, no, nah, nah, it's not zone two, but you know, it's that like zone three tempo, and it's nice. Um, anyway, we go to the Mont Sac Saconex. I can't really pronounce French things very well. Sorry about this. Um, again, five point two. But we go to the Col de la Rome. Now they did a very similar stage in the Dauphiné last year, where they came out with some absolutely not normal numbers that I've ever seen. Um, but if we look at this as a um, as a as a whole climb, um, it was about six watts per kilo for Alexei Lutschenko. <clears throat> now, if we also, we can look at uh, Ben O'Connor. Now, Ben O'Connor is obviously uh, finished in the same group, so it's a pretty good comparison. That Obviously, the weights everyone puts in Strava, how accurate are they compared to what they are in the Tour de France? We're not 100% sure, so that's why I like to take an average, and obviously, power meters always read differently. Um, and so, Ben O'Connor said 6.2, uh, so let's say it was 6.1 um, for the about half an hour-ish, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, so this is basically when they paced it really hard for Pogaccia and then Pogaccia attacked with maybe five kilometers of the climb to go um, and you can see there's like a, a heart rate spike here when basically everyone's just chasing while before they're sort of on the wheels and it's pretty hard but half an hour at six watts per kilo so let's say if, if Pogaccia's putting a minute and a half into them you could probably guess that he's doing at least 6.3 to 6.4 watts per kilo which is obviously bonkers like, okay it's not a crazy long climb though that is the only thing <clears throat> It's not like an hour climb at 6.4, which obviously if he did that, I would be like, oh my god. But it is, still is quite ridiculous that he basically managed to put about a minute. Well, he put a minute into Carapaz alone, and he's like maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. So, um, And then on the descent, um, they descended pretty quick. Uh, they didn't really gain or lose too much time. But the Col de la Colombière, now these times aren't actually that quick. Obviously, it was in the rain at the end of a stage, a hard stage. And yesterday, obviously, was 250 kilometers, so that was quite tough as well. However... It wasn't actually as thermonuclear as people are going to say. Now, again, on this climb, I think Pogaccia did about 20, 22 minutes would be my prediction based on the fact that he gained about a minute and a half on these lot, <clears throat> maybe more. But they rode at about 5.7 watts per kilo. Um, if we look at them too, he, um, Ben O'Connor seemed to come a little bit higher, but pretty similar to be fair, 5.7, 5.8 watts per kilo. So again, you can suggest that Tade Pogaccia, <clears throat> if he's doing a minute and a half on a shorter climb, He's probably doing like again 6.3 um, to 6.4 watts per kilo, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, now, so if we look at this, I would say that Tade Pagacha probably finished um, about an average of 20k an hour, which again isn't the fastest time on Strava. But the key point to remember about this is that Tade Pagacha did it on his own. And you might say, well, you don't get that much draft. But 20k an hour, I would hazard guess. I actually, there's a study on this, so I should find it. But I'd hazard guess. You're probably saving 20 to 30 watts probably maybe let's say 20 watts 20 watts is a lot like if you're sitting in at 360 watts for this lad and then you have to do 380 watts 
that is a big difference. Even if it's 10 watts, that is a big, big difference. Um, and also it was quite wet. So if we actually look, Tadipi Gacha has uploaded his file from the Dauphiné, um, and you can see when he did a 2244, well, we'll be able to look. So this could actually give us some real top details on um, on how, uh, on sort of the numbers that the man was doing. He did 380 normalized for four hours. This, this stage was absolutely bonkers. I did analysis on Sepp Kuss on this power file, and like, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. Like, it was crazy. Um, but he did the colder ROM here in 27 minutes, 24, and that was 6.4 watts per kilo. And if we look at what this boy did here, he did it in um, 28.11 at 6 watts per kilo. So obviously there's different days and stuff. If he's doing 27, 26 at 6.2, then we can safely say that he was doing like, oh no, sorry, this is Ben O'Connor. Um, we can, this is Pagatra's file, sorry. We can safely say he was doing like six and a half, maybe um, up this 27 minute climb uh, because he was like even quicker than this. And then the Col de la Colombia, he did six watts per kilo under the 22.44. And considering we basically been there by a minute and a half, he's probably doing like 6.3 up here on the Col de la Colombia on his own. Like obviously you can see the amount of tax here, which means he's not on his own. But yeah, that's bonkers, isn't it? Like, to the point of like, we need to have a little think about this. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything because it is what it is. But I think we all know what everyone's thinking. Like with Sagan's past history and the sort of numbers that people are putting out now, it's only sort of natural to have skepticism and be like, is it normal? Um, but if you look at the gaps, I think it's just unbelievable. Like, okay, you could argue that Roglic probably would have been near there, and I think that is a good argument that like this GC contenders like <clears throat> is sort of a bit questionable like carapaz i think is really really strong um but i think a lot of the rest of them aren't really that good like it's not like you got peak Froome. it's not like you've got peak contador or nibali or like you know it is a slight changing of the guard and considering roglic is gone then it's basically pagacha and carapaz and to be fair he did absolutely dust off carapaz so in that regard maybe it was just an outrage i mean obviously it's an outrageous performance but i would say that he potentially doesn't have as much competition as he could do um, if he's going to race maybe like in three, four years' time when Bernal's here in top condition, Pidcock here, Remco here, people like that, it could be a bit harder. But having said that, that was still absolutely ridiculous numbers. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. If you've got any more sort of ideas or anything, then we'll, um, we'll whip them out. Uh, but apart from that, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.